In the episode number 65 of the ASAP Tech News, we talk about Nvidia and their launch of the RTX 3050 and the RTX 3090 Ti graphics cards, Acerock announces two new Z690 Aqua motherboards, EK Waterblocks upgrades the pumps on all products, and Fison acquires the next storage brand. We start with Nvidia and the launch of two new graphics cards, the RTX 3050 and the RTX 3090 Ti. The RTX 3090 Ti is based on the GA102 Ampere graphics core, and it will be available in multiple versions outside of the Nvidia Founders Edition models. This graphics card will be delivered with no less than 10,752 CUDA cores, 84 RT cores and 336 tensor cores, among other things. This means that aftermarket RTX 3090 Ti's will be available on the market, however the pricing more than likely will be above everyone's pay grade, that is, if you can find one. In terms of specifications, the RTX 3090 Ti has a GPU boost frequency of 1860MHz and a total memory of 24GB of GDDR6X memory. On the opposite side of the spectrum, on the same day, Nvidia launched the RTX 3050 graphics card. This model is using the GA106 graphics chip, just like the RTX 3060 graphics card. However, the RTX 3050 has only 2560 CUDA cores and 8GB of GDDR6 video memory. In terms of general specifications, the RTX 3050 has a maximum GPU boost clock of 1780MHz and a TDP rating of 130W. We continue with Acerock and their new top-of-the-line Z690 Aqua motherboards, and yes, there are two variants of the Z690 Aqua models. The main differences between these two comes down to the overclocking capability of these motherboards. For example, the overclocking version has only two RAM slots available. In addition, in the place where the two missing RAM slots were, there are multiple buttons that will aid with the overclocking. The OC variant also supports only six SATA ports, while the regular model of the Aqua has eight. Instead of the two missing SATA ports, the OC model has an additional power connector. Another difference between these two model boards is at the back, on the I.O. panel. While the regular Aqua has four USB 3.2 type ports, the OC model has only two, because for the space for the other two is taken by, no joke, a PS2 port. And before you say that this is useless, it isn't. The PS2 port is heavily used in extreme overclocking as while a USB device will require a USB driver to function, a PS2 device will always work no matter the circumstances. The pricing is not yet known, but judging by the previous Aqua motherboards, these two will not be cheap. Next, we have EK Waterblocks and the announcement that all EK products, which includes standalone pumps, pump reservoir combo units, and distribution plates, will be delivered with updated pumps. This update includes both D5 pumps and DDC pump products. The DDC pumps have been upgraded from the version 3.2 to the 4.2 version, while the D5 pumps have been upgraded from the G2 generation to the G3 generation. The changes in each pump are welcomed. First, the D5 pump now has a PMW control driver and its power connector has been replaced from Molex to a SATA connector. This combination greatly reduces the cable clutter inside the system and provides a better and more stable connection for reliable power delivery and spin control. The changes for the DDC pump include an upgraded motor, all black wiring, a SATA connector for power instead of Molex, and a 32 bit communication instead of the older 8 bit. This will result in a better overall communication with the pump and the system, and better RPL control and reporting. If you want to do the pump upgrade yourself, then you are in luck because these pumps are available for purchase as standalone products. The EK Loop DDC 4.2 PMW is available for 78.90 euros, and the same can be said for the D5. And finally, Fison, the brand that is responsible for a lot of the memory controllers we have in our SSDs, has acquired the Next Storage Corporation and the Next Storage brand. This is more than likely an attempt for Fison to open channels into the retail market under their own brand. This way the company could sell their own SSDs under their own brand and thus expand into more markets and revenue streams. Only time will tell if this will be a good investment or if we will be able to purchase Fison made or next storage branded M.2 SSDs. And this is the end of the episode number 65 of the ASAP Tech News, one of the few tech news series which aims to deliver you the news as fast as possible for your convenience.